I felt privileged. My advice would be follow your dream. If it's something that every day you wake up and you feel an aspiration or a drive, most likely that's what you should be doing. My goal and my aspiration was to be a duly ordained elder in the work of the Lord. I'm one of the very few women that started at the age of ministry that I did. At the age of 17, I was duly ordained in the ministry to be an ordained elder. So when I became grown, I was very excited that it just wasn't an idea that I had, but it actually was the will of the Lord for my life. The one thing that makes me really happy is when I learn a new scripture. I remember when I remember the scripture, Hebrews 4.12, it says, and I just have to move my hand when I say this, is that the word of God is quick, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit joint and marrow and the discern of the thought and the intents of the heart. When I travel and I come and I stay over on Monday to conduct 12 noon prayer, I just have a good feeling all over. I remember when I taught the children about the armor of God. I said daily we have to put this on. It's the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, our loin girt about with truth, and our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace and the word of God, which is the, the sword of the spirit. So those are things that cause me to get excited when I learn a new scripture. The one thing I would say is that respect your parents. When you, you respect your parents, it's something that exuberates on the inside. It causes you to always to think twice before you say something. And it, you give thought to what you're going to say. I'm one of nine. And the most important lesson I've ever learned was just being in the company of my mom all the time. My mother was a stay-at-home mother and my father, with one check, was able to take care of nine children and both of him and my mom. And I always appreciate that my mom sacrificed to be there day in and day out. When we leave in the morning, she was there. When we come home from school, she was there. Making dinner every day. So it was things I never had to think about because I had a mother that enjoyed mothering. She enjoyed having all nine of us. And the running joke that we have in the family is that all of us was her favorite. We can't even say she treated one different than she did the other. And as a result of that, every day I strive to be like my mom. She's no longer living but I think I have an edge on my other eight because I look more like her than any of the children. So when they say, she looks like little Mary, then I'm saying, I got it made. And I just enjoyed my parents all my life. They were there. I can't remember one night that I didn't have both of my parents home. And this is one thing my father would always say when his relatives come in from out of state to visit. He said, not one night have we slept in different beds or on the couch because I understand that no matter what happened during the day, at night we understand we go into the same bed. And to me, that inspired me to always to want to be a peacemaker because that's what I seen in my parents. When I found out that I was being honored 
at this particular occasion, the Heart of Gold. I felt honored that my colleagues, my church member, the students of the West Coast School, but most of all, I had the support of my pastor. He consented. And I always remember that, is that I'm representing an entire congregation. I'm representing a student body. I'm representing women at large. And this has been probably in my life the most highest honor that I can ever think of having. And I'm most appreciative and most humble as a result of it. You are who I need to become. been a member of West Coast for 38 years. I could probably have a tendency to be a very much an in-the-box kind of person and probably not get out of the box, but West Coast will push me outside of the box to do some things that I haven't done or um, explore some strength that I might not have known I had to use. And it's just, it's turned, it's been a, I don't know exactly how to say this, it's a, I don't want to say it's a reason to live, but it, it is so inspiring to live, it's exciting to live, it gives you a, a reason to find out, oh my lord, what, what's going to happen tomorrow? You know, what, what can tomorrow possibly bring? Because, you know, being a part of West Coast, uh, the, the songs that we do and the, the messages that we hear, are so faith inspiring. They're so, th you can do this. And, and then the examples that come, that, that are taught of so-and-so did this, so-and-so did this. And you know, it's easy to do, it's easy to forget what possibilities we have. It's easy to forget what God can do. It's easy to forget. And we see examples of it all throughout the Bible of people who said, oh yeah, that's, you, you know, his God has to be my God because look what his God did. And then, in a minute, they forget, or the next Pharaoh forgets. Um, I was looking at Daniel the other day, and all the, the messages that Daniel gave, um, and all the different times that, that the, the thought was, okay, everybody, this is the real God. He delivered Daniel out of the lion's den. You know, he, he took care of this situation. He revealed the dream. This is the real God. And the next thing you know, they're doing something else. It's easy to forget. And this keeps me reminded of who he is and what he can do. Because I was just in a six o'clock prayer this morning and thinking about the possibility. God invented a medicine for Jim Dodge while Jim was going through the process. And in the meantime, a doctor sent him to another doctor and the doctor said, well, I know how to cure hepatitis. How often do you walk into a psychiatrist who says, I know how to cure hepatitis? And these were the medical doctors that didn't know. And they said, how? And he said, well, just start eating four artichokes a day. And do you know, the day that Jim passed, 
Jim had no hepatitis in his body and there is today not a cure for hepatitis that they know of medically. Artichoke juice, eat four artichokes a day. Th to be reminded of what the possibilities are, it's just, it's just, it's just mind boggling. But we forget, you know, we, we tend to forget that we just walked through a Red Sea. You just walked through on dry ground. You know, you just had a, a disease that they told you there was no cure for, and now there is one. Now, now you have one, and now you're cured. We forget. I thought the phone call was to ask me to do something else, and I didn't know that the phone call was going to be to say, we'd like to honor you at this banquet this year. And I know what goes into the process and the thought and the choosing and the um <clears throat> the honor itself in romans 12 and 2 it tells us i beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of god <sighs> that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto god which is your reasonable service and not be conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What is that saying? Transform it in my mind. That's what I want, because that scripture goes on to talk about your part in the body of Christ and the gifts that you have. So this is the subject matter. You are the subject matter in the scripture. And I was just, I was just taken. I was just, are you kidding? You want to honor me? You know, uh, <laughs> sure. You know, yeah. I mean, I was not going to turn that down. I, but okay, <laughs> because I knew that somebody had given this thought and made this decision because they're just not haphazardly made. And I, uh, I was just taken. I, I know what to say. Life is short. We have to step outside the box and just allow ourselves to do something different, allow ourselves to live and allow ourselves to um, enjoy life. You are who, be, who I need to become. I grew up in Seattle, Washington, and um, was raised there, went to high school, through high school, and then I went back east to college, to Tufts University in Boston, and graduated, and then um, was in the Army for two and a half years, and um, it was during the Vietnam era. Um, but I was very fortunate. I got a job as a diplomatic courier was based in Washington, D.C. And then I always had an interest in international business and living overseas. So I got a master's in international business from the Thunderbird School of International Management in Phoenix, Arizona. And after that, Karen and I were married in 1968. We will have been married 46 years. And then I started my career in the travel industry. We have two children, 
uh, two daughters. One is married and lives in Northern California. I um, have always been interested in several things. Uh, one is education and mentoring. Um, I was very fortunate. My parents were very pro-education uh, and they were well educated and um, they both went. My father graduated from MIT and my mother graduated from Barnard and my sister from Wellesley. And um, my father um, helped men mentor students, uh, so that, qualified students, so that they could go to colleges. So I always had this wish that this is something that I would love to do because my education helped me so much. Um, and the other thing was with Sarasota is such a giving and such a theatrical uh, and cultural city, there is so much going on here. So one night, one fateful night, uh, six and a half years ago, Karen and I went to see the West Coast Black Theater Troupe. And this was before they had the theater and they were performing at the Art Center. And there was just a little line in the, in the daily newspaper saying that they were gonna be putting on their Motown show. So, Karen and I went and I immediately, I love the show, and I immediately fell in love with what Nate was doing. So I went back the next night to see the show again and then to meet Nate. And I said, um, Mr. Jacobs, I love what you are doing. I'm a marketing person and I don't see many marketing um, things around the city or in the paper. Is there any way that I could be of assistance? Not really knowing what uh, this was going to be. At this time, Christine Jennings and Howard Millman also came in to assist the troupe. So what it, I ended up doing with Nate, which was wonderful, is sponsoring their marketing for them. It has been so rewarding to me. I'm retired and I didn't want to do what I had done before, but I wanted to use my marketing and my people skills, my organizational skills. Nate is so passionate about what he does and um, so dedicated, such a mentor to people. And he is such an amazing qualified person in the theatrical sense. He just has this intuition of being able to pick people and place them in a career. So it has been a wonderful six years. This has also had other spin-offs on um, the educational side of things. I belong to um, Christ Church of Longbow Key, which is a Presbyterian church. It's a new church, um, 10 years old, and we have a gorgeous new building on the key. Um, but the church is also very uh, mission oriented. And it's interesting how things complement each other. They have what is called a Reading Buddies program with the Dream Center, uh, United Community Center in Bradenton. And this is where 80 of our congregational members volunteer to read every Thursday with approximately 80 to 90 at-risk one, two, and third graders. The program has been extremely successful, most importantly for the students. Reach out to people. It's extremely important when you're young it's 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 a confusing time and often young people don't have maybe family support or financial support or st stability or consistency or whatever um, so it's be brave reach out to organizations and to people who are coming to you and saying I can help you, you are to become
Well, ever since I was 10 years old, I knew I wanted to be self-employed. Not that, I didn't know. I didn't know what type of uh, profession that I would be self-employed in. But I always envisioned being self-employed. So when I initially finished school, book of high school, that proud of that purple and gold. Every time I think about book of high school and that purple and gold, I just get energized inside. It is such a great school and such a great experience that I've had at Buckeye. And I did graduate in 1966. And then when I went to the Air Force, and then ironically, the devil had got his hand on me. So I didn't never go to church no more unless it was to a funeral or uh, to a wedding. But he had to humble, but he humbled me down in 1974. And I finally surrendered it all in February of 1975. And, and I never looked back. And I remember this, this preacher, I mean, this, he was a preacher, but he also was a part-time jailer at Sarasota uh, County Jail. And so they had, I got out on bond initially, but they had rearrested me a week before trial because they said they heard I was going to leave the jurisdiction of the state, so they wanted to make sure I was going to be around for the trial. And so this guy was named Preacher, we call him Preacher Joe. So I was right, so when I had surrendered my life over to God in 1975, February, uh, I was writing my mom and my ex-wife at the time, Cleoma, she's since passed away, and a couple of other people. And so the jailer called me to the table, Johnny, he said, we, I've been reading your mail. He said, but we read all that mail mail going out, so it's just not we seeing you out. He said, but I like what you've been saying to your mom and your ex-wife and your friends. He said, uh, he said, let me say this to you. He said, don't get discouraged. He said, you're probably gonna go to prison. He said, but God got some great work for you. So I thought about that the whole while when he told me that, and I went on to went on to prison, and they sent me to the East Unit because they had me branded as being a cane pin and all of that, and they sent me to Florida State Prison East Unit. That's where I started out after um, going through the process of the end of Lake Butler. The inmates would love, they would love to see him, and I said, well, I need to contact Henry and see can he get in ministry. And I said, cause I said, I know they gonna come initially to see the young girls, but he'll say something that they, some, some of them might hear the right word and, and that'll be it. So that's when I contacted you and told you how to, you know, con how to get in. And then I looked around, you was in there. And then that was in 1976, I think, and the rest of the history. I said, Paul Harvey said, now you know the rest of the story. And I remember Andrew Young told me one time and, uh, it was in 86, I was at a, a Freedom Farm banquet down in Fort Miles, and I got a chance to meet him in person, sit down and talk with him. And share with him where I'd been, he said, there's nothing to be ashamed of. He said, all of God, great men, the men in prison, Paul, Joseph. So the list is gone. He said, so just keep your eye focused on God and you'll be all right. So it's been my goal since I've been now, I took over Tempo News in September of nine, uh, uh, 90. So this is, this coming September marked my 25th year that I've been doing it. And, and I would like to think I've contributed a lot to both Sarasota and Melody community because the, when Jackson started the bulletin in 1960, and we're getting ready now to do a series on Jackson legacy starting from 1960 to present, which has been 55 years. That his, and I, and I give him credit because he started it. And uh, I just, another link in the process of keeping it going and and I've been doing it now for 25 years, and, and my son been with me over 20 years, so it, he'll get a chance to get the torch and take it another 20 years. So he expect to be around a long time, and, um, but we've done uh, many, many things uh, in the community. Uh, all this progress that you see now uh, in Newtown that's happening, it started with Tempo News, because I opened up the community to other folk outsiders to let them share what they wanted to do. And also it's evident with Sarasota Ford, back when Vern took over, when they had African-American men working at car lots, they would just lot men in car washes and keep the lot clean. But he opened an opportunity to sell cars, which, they, which is a great opportunity. So the flurry of uh, African-American men that you see now in Sarasota, Manatee County, is African-American selling cars, you can thank Vern Buchanan. No, he's at the origin of that progress. We believe that faith in God gives meaning and purpose to human life. You've got to believe in a God and believe in God. 
it's a lot of people select the different gods, but you know, to me it's just one, but that's that's what make America great. You have freedom of choice and the First Amendment uh, and by the Constitution in which we live. So trust in God first and foremost, get your education and as much education and have goals. You gotta set your goal because if you fail to plan, you can look to fail. You And I, as I expressed earlier, I'm living my dream. Ever since I was 10 years old, I wanted to be self-employed. And for the greater part, except for the three and a half years that I worked for the late William Fred Jackson, uh, I've been self-employed. And that's been over 40 years. You are who I need to be. I was born in Brooksville, Florida, but raised in Crystal River, Florida. Crystal River didn't have hospitals, so we had to go to Brooksville and be born downstairs in the basement. That's where I was born. My father's name is Winslow Thomas Watkins, Sr., and my mother's name is Mary Frances Watkins. Crystal River Primary School, Crystal River Middle School, Crystal River High School. <laughs> then I went to the University of South Florida in Tampa, and my advanced degree was in uh, the University of Miami. My goal was always to be, I used to say, a world famous gospel singer. And, but once I got to college and started teaching, I wasn't quite sure at that point, but I knew it would be something in music. When I, when I was at the University of South Florida and Dr. Porter was there, with all these young people singing and that really inspired me and it was from there that I knew I wanted to be a part of that wasn't quite sure how and when I went to Atlanta Georgia because I was with the college choir festival that they had it was there that I saw Dr. Porter again and it was in 1979 and I saw this huge orchestra big choir and I was supposed to be at the college festival because I was there, I directed the University of South Florida Gospel Choir, and we were attending workshops, but when I passed this room, I stopped. And it was from there that I began my journey with West Coast. And it was that, it inspired me because I was also searching for the Lord, which I always search for God. And so, that's where things changed for me. Whatever, I knew I wanted to be a part of that group. And it just so happened that I was, and it was very inspiring. But after I graduated from the University of Miami, I began, um, I changed the name to Watkins Music Company, which encompassed music publishing, music productions, and I also started Jewelstone Records, which was a record company to help get artists uh, music done, which my first project was actually with Dr. Porter and the West Coast Gospel Course of Florida, and he's real. I actually bought in a, um, well, very well-known gospel artist at the time, Reverend, T Reverend Timothy Wright, and my first recording was a live gospel recording. From there, I went to re went on to record other artists. So it's expanded from print music publishing to publishing to a record company. From there, I started mentoring students. It transcended from that to um, I began an artist development company which encompassed a vocal studio. So for students, they had to audition to become a part of that. But it wasn't like my educational where I taught for 16 years in public school. 
this was a professional vocal studio where they had to audition and that was something that they wanted to pursue as a career because I would not accept every student. They couldn't be hobbyists or parents were making them. This is something they knew they wanted. And from that, we've had a lot of students that have gone on now to uh, have professional careers. Like one of my little girls, Ashley Ricards, she's an actress and she plays on MTV's Awkward. She was on uh, Ugly Betty, CSI Miami, a whole lot of those shows started right here from my studio right here in Sarasota, Florida. Danielle White, of course, went on to, she's an actress now, and has had several movie premieres here at the um, cinema in uh, Sarasota. But she also, at the time, she was younger, when they had American Junior Idol, she was one of the winners there. So I've had another young girl went on to become a Broadway uh, star, Molly Callens, I'm very proud of her. Quite a few of them, but those are the ones that, you know, right off the top of my head, that I always mention them because they were one, some of my first, but I've had a lot of students. And that vocal studio grew, and so my business began to expand, so I'm really grateful for all of those things. To a child that's really interested in music, I would say while they are young, because there's so much knowledge available, even like for me, my, it was very difficult. And my parents didn't have a lot of money, so there wasn't a whole lot of opportunities. But now, I would say to a young person, and uh, anyone, industry, there are so many avenues and opportunities for you to learn. There is no excuse anymore, but the thing about music is, it's not only the knowledge of the book learning, but it's the hours of perfecting the gift of practice time. So if you're younger, you have all the time in the world outside of your regular educational studies take every second. If you know for sure, do not waste one second without practicing. Make sure you master the skill as early as possible. It's not impossible for adults, but because of time, the time factor, sometimes that may take a little longer because you don't have as much time. But yes, anything you want to learn now, it's available on the internet. And so while it's still free, I would say just go for it.